There's somebody I haven't talked to in over 20 years. They found me on Facebook and sent me a DM, and I didn't remember who they were at first. Have you ever had that happen before? <laughs> yeah, this guy hit me up, reminded me that he was my kitchen manager at Chuck E. Cheese when I was 16. <laughs> Please show some proper respect. It was weird. He, I remember him now, but he hit me up and he was like, dude, you're doing comedy, man. It's good to see. Remember the good times at Chuck E. Cheese? <laughs> and I was like, no, <laughs> who is this? Is this the kind of bots I get? What the heck? You know, he's getting all these great ones. I'm getting this guy. But now I remember the first day I met him. First, first job in my life, 16 years old, Chuck E. Cheese. I was excited. I showed up. He's the kitchen manager. They're, he's supposed to show me how everything goes, right? They leave me alone with him. He goes and gets all this pizza dough out of the walk-in. He comes out. He throws it on a table. I'm thinking, all right, he's going to show me how to make pizza, right? The famous Chuck E. Cheese pizza recipe is mine. <laughs> Let's do it. And then he takes his pants off. <laughs> I'm 16. This is my first job, so... My initial thought was like, uh, maybe this is how you make pizza here. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see what he's got. <laughs> but then he jumps ass cheeks first onto the pizza dough. Yeah. And while maintaining eye contact with me, power farted into the dough. Yeah, it was traumatic. I can still see the flour flying up from the sides. <laughs> And his face just not giving a fuck. He was just, he saw me and he was like, this is my kind of dude. Let me run, run the test by him. Yeah, it was weird. And without missing a beat, right after the fart, he just goes like this. He goes, welcome to Chuck E. Cheese, man. I was like, what the, is this what you guys do here? Is this a known thing? And I was, I was just like, bro, kids are gonna eat that. I'm gonna eat that. Why would you mess up the dough? And this is what he says. He goes, bro, that oven is like 700 degrees. It's gonna burn the fart right off. <laughs> so chillax. And he started walking towards the salads and I was like, oh no, <laughs> you can't put those in the oven. What are you gonna do? What about the salads, man? <laughs> I didn't know what to say, you know? He's the kitchen manager. He's only 17, but he's the kitchen manager. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. So it's been over 20 years and this guy randomly reached out to me. So I, I was just like, man, what are you up to these days? This guy owns a bakery now. Yeah, survived the pandemic and everything. It's called Farts Bakery. It's in Des Moines, that's all I can tell you. It's doing well. Every morning he wakes up and eats a can of beans and he's like, time to make the muffins, let's go. <laughs> it was a traumatic experience working at Chuck E. G's. I'll break you off another bonus Chuck E. Cheese story. I've never told anybody this, okay? Every now and then they pull me out of the kitchen to work as Chuck E. Cheese. And then like, I go work the showroom. Sounds like I'm a, pro like a stripper, but it's kids and I'm just Chuck E. Cheese, but it feels like it. So I'm paid way less. And these kids, they're just like so stoked to see you when you're Chuck E, you know? And I'm wearing that filthy costume. <laughs> I remember this kid walked in with his parents once and they were at the front door. I was really far in the showroom and from long distance, the kid saw me and he was like, Chucky! And he just started running towards me with his arms open and I'm ready to like embrace the impact of this hug. And right when he hugs me, the kid's head hits me really hard in the dick. <laughs> it was the worst pain because I was already in the middle of like going down for a hug. So when he hit me, I like the hug sped up and like the thing about the Chucky mask is the nose is so long and it's made of this hard rubber and the top of this Chucky nose hits the very top of this kid's head and I hear his neck go into his shoulders. <laughs> You're not supposed to hear that through the mask. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you know, like, it was the scariest two seconds of my life because I was thinking, did I just murder this child <laughs> working at Chuck E. Cheese dressed as Chucky? Chucky's gonna get sued, it's because of me. So I immediately just like looked at him and I just see he's alive, so that's good. And then I see just tears going down his face, right? And I see his parents in the background and they have no idea what's happening yet. So this is like the creepiest thing I ever done and I didn't even realize it till later in life. At the moment, I'm just like, I gotta hold on to this job, right? So I looked at him and I said, hey, 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 you don't wanna get Chucky fired, do you? <laughs> I was desperate, okay? You think I'm proud of this? I'm not. And he said no. I slipped a couple tokens in his pocket and sent him on his way. 
never came back and got me. I was like, yeah, I can't believe it. It's been over 20 years, I still think about that kid. Somewhere he's a grown man with just like a fucked up neck. <laughs> just doesn't go to Chuck E. Cheese when there's a birthday party. He's like, fuck that. <laughs> Their pizza smells like shit. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, had another blast from the past thing happen not too long ago. First person I ever hit in the face is back in my life, so that's cool. <laughs> Only person. I was, look, I was 13 years old. I used to hang out with a bunch of friends. We'd go play soccer after school. There's this one dude named Josh. We were all cool. But like at one point, when we were around 13, I don't know if he was going through puberty in a weird way or something, but he started doing this thing. Like if you're not paying attention during the game, he kicks the soccer ball and makes sure it hits you right in the dick. <laughs> that's right, another dick getting hit story. Here we go. <laughs> And it was crazy, you know? I'd be walking home with two, three dick shots per day because we didn't know how to deal with it. This was like our first psychopath we all met together. We're like, what do we do with Josh? I don't know. And one day I just snapped, you know? He hit me right in the dick, direct hit. And I had to give him credit because he was accurate. It was like a laser every time. I remember one time I heard the kick and I turned around and I saw it going this way and I was like, whew! And then it curved in midair and hit me right in the dick. I was like, he's going pro! God damn! It's good. No, I snapped. He hit me in the dick one day and I just said, hey, Josh, you hit me or anybody else here in the dick again, I'm gonna kick your ass. I didn't know what I was saying. I was 13 years old. He was breaking my psyche, you know? And he like apologized, we kept playing, and then I hear another kick and I turn around, it's coming right towards me. So I dodged it, but now everybody's looking at me because I talked to all that shit, right? So I didn't even hesitate. I went right towards him, put everything I had into this punch. I made sure my strength was there. I made sure the accuracy was there. I lined him up real good. He was just like smirking. And I put like everything. It should have been a sports science on this punch. <laughs> I put, and it, when I came down for reasons I can't explain, at the last second, my hand just opened up like this. <laughs> and it just turned into the loudest bitch slap. <laughs> ever in history, anywhere. It was a whack! I remember everybody turned around. It was perfect. I couldn't believe it. You know, like, I can never describe how perfect it is. You know when you're like high-fiving people? It doesn't matter. But every now and then there's a perfect high-five. You just kind of look at each other for like a split second. And you're like, damn, we should hang out more. <laughs> that was rare, special. <laughs> it was like that, but with Josh's face. I got that motherfucker. <laughs> I remember seeing like sweat fly off his head and he wasn't even sweating before I slapped him. I was like, I slapped sweat out of you that wasn't even out yet. That's incredible, you know? And when I looked at his face, it was like, I could still see my red handprint on his pale face. And everybody was just like looking at us. I thought he was gonna give me credit. He was gonna go, touche, you know, but he did not. <laughs> Instead, he grabbed his soccer ball and he took off running. And I never saw Josh again in my life. This was my friend. I was like, was he an imaginary friend? I don't know. Could have been, my hand hurt for like a week. I was like, where did he go? At 13 years old, I had to <laughs> deal with the fact that I slapped somebody out of society. I was like, wow, it's incredible. Am I an X-Man? I don't know, is that my thing? I slap, they call me the slap, I don't know. So time went by, all these years went by. I'm not even friends on social media. And right before the pandemic, I was doing a show in Dallas. I look in the front and sitting at a table by himself, adult version, Josh, how terrifying is that? <laughs> I noticed him in the middle of a diarrhea joke and I was like, how am I gonna keep it together? I don't have a professional here. I just thought he was gonna shoot me in the middle of my diarrhea joke. I was like, is this how it ends? <laughs> like, it would have been the worst. You know, but I recognized him even after all these years. It ain't like he had a soccer ball and he was like, it's revenge time, motherfucker. Let's see that dick. You know? <laughs> I recognized him because he still had my handprint on his face. It was insane. He was laughing, ha ha. <laughs> Every digit accounted for. Now, we talked after the show. We're actually friends now. Me and Josh are cool. He doesn't know about this joke, but he's cool. You know, we're having a good time. And don't feel bad about Josh because here's a little update. He showed me a picture of his family. This dude is married to a supermodel and has 11 kids. Yeah and they all have my handprint on their faces. I slapped the shit out of this guy. I don't think you understand. It's an inherited slap. So we're looking back on all these people in my life. I'm getting old, that's the thing. I feel so old. I feel great, but younger people make me feel so old. It's the people in their 20s that don't get my references and shit. 
They always say the thing, they're just like, I think that was before my time. I'm like, oh, fuck you. You know who Screech is. You know who Screech. <laughs> he wasn't born. You fucking know. <laughs> It's the worst. It happened to me once. I was at a grocery store. I was at H-E-B not too long ago. And there was this guy bagging my food. And this guy looks around my age, right? And this guy looks around my age. And he goes, hey, excuse me, sir. I'm like, yeah, what's up? And he goes, are you my friend Daniel's dad? <laughs> no. What? I'm nobody's dad. What are you talking about, man? It's not like he's asking me if I'm the father of, like, a baby or a child or a teenager. He's asking me if I'm the father of another grown-ass man <laughs> trying to figure life out, like me. I'm like, what, the, what are you doing, man? I was in my car looking up the grocery store's HR department. I was like, can I get this guy fired for this? <laughs> That's all inside stuff. You know, I'm a comedian. I got to react fast in every situation. So what I actually said was like, are you my friend Daniel's dad? And I went, no, but I'm fucking his mom. I'll see you later. I mean, no, no, like, that would have been awesome. I thought of it later. Damn it. I was in the car, I should have said I fucked his mom. <laughs> Spread it around the school, dude. Oh, man. Let me see what kind of room this is. Is this a jack room? You guys jack off? I don't know if this is a jack room. I could tell. I could definitely tell. We're in a muscle shirt, sweating already. <laughs> He was like, I was doing it all day. I came to this to let my balls regenerate. <laughs> Remember how old you were? <laughs> First time you jacked up, how old? Somebody just said 10 over there. 11? Average age around 11, 12. I've been doing the survey lately. One guy said eight at a show. Everybody just got away from him immediately. I was like, what the fuck? I was eight, I mean, I was 12. What the fuck? <laughs> One of his arms was huge. I was like, Jesus Christ. You guys, I'll tell you, Austin, you guys remember there was a tornado here almost two months ago, right? Yeah, yeah I was terrified because all these people were letting me know it was coming right towards my place. And I was like, holy shit, right? Terrifying, because I live in apartments, and everybody knows the strategy when you live in apartments is wait to see if it kills you or not. That's what we do. <laughs> and I was like, here we go again. <laughs> I was nervous, man. I was so high. I looked up uh, on the fucking... <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna slowly drive into a tornado while trying to outspeed it. <laughs> I didn't know what to do, so I was just like, yeah, fuck it, I'll go to bed, right? <laughs> I was just laying down, I was looking out the window. It was very scary, there was like a thunderstorm, weather was very tornadic, you know? I was like, oh no. There was this tree by my window for seven years. It's been there and it's never done this, but this night it was just smacking my window nonstop. <laughs> Terrifying and my survival instincts kick in, right? This is the night you kind of find out what kind of person you are. And then I just jacked off and fell asleep. <laughs> That's it. It saved my life. <laughs> Woke up the next day, beautiful. <laughs> Had a bowl of Fruity Pebbles. Forgot about the tornado for a second. I was like, oh shit, I forgot that. Saved my life. My Jack brother, give it up to me, right? Here. Actually, maybe... Maybe we should just do it in the air. Bam, high five right there. <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> oh, I was gonna tell you guys. So, shocking thing, I tell some people, I don't know, they get shocked, I don't know, but when I tell people I've never been in a fight, right? People look at me and they see how big I am and they're like, well, you've never been in a fight, man, you're a big dude. I'm just like, yeah, I'm a big dude, man, but punches hurt my fucking face and skull. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Why would I want to be into that, right? So I've gone my whole life successfully avoiding fights. Sometimes I lie my way out of fights. I, sometimes I joke my way out of fights. Sometimes I just move to Austin my way out of fights. <laughs> it's amazing. I'll tell you guys, first person I ever dodged in my life, I was in seventh grade, right? I had a huge crush on this girl named Tammy. She was my next door neighbor. And then she started going out with this dude that went to my middle school named Carlos. <clears throat> All you gotta know about Carlos, seventh grade, leader of a gang, yeah, covered in tattoos and had his own vehicle in the seventh grade. <laughs> Couldn't compete with it. Decided to wait it out. He gave teachers a ride to school at one point. I was like, Why is that? how's that okay? How is that okay, you know? So some time went by and then I noticed Carlos and Tammy broke up. Carlos starts dating another girl that goes to our school named Maria. In my innocent seventh grade mind, I just thought they broke up. 
So I go hang out with Tammy one day, and I go, sorry about you and Carlos breaking up. I see he's dating Maria now. She says, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> so in seventh grade, I accidentally player hated for the very first time <laughs> on the leader of the most powerful gang in my middle school. <laughs> I was terrified. <laughs> I begged her, don't tell him it was Chris Tellis that told you this classified information. Right in front of me, she's like, my best friend Chris Tellis just told me. <laughs> I got friend zoned and found out I was gonna get murdered in the same sentence. <laughs> I go to school the next day. I heard he's asking around about me, right? I found my best friend Eric, still friends to this day. And I said, hey Eric, if this goes down gang jump style, do you have my back? And he said, no. <laughs> Terrifying. I didn't think we'd win. I just needed his body to absorb some of those body blows. You know what I'm saying? Smart dude. Moment of truth comes. I'm getting a book from my locker, right? And I feel this whole hallway surrounding my locker in anticipation of this fight. Then I feel Carlos tap me on the back. I turn around. There he is with two of his friends. Classic gang jump style. <laughs> and then he goes, yo, you Chris Tellez? And without even missing a beat, I look at him and I go, nope. <laughs> What's the point of this? I'm gonna be late to science, you know? Just like <laughs> and I remember thinking, if, if he asked me what my name is, I'm gonna go as Vicente for the rest of the school year, because who fights with a Vicente? I've never heard of it. But I didn't have to worry about that, because he looked at me and he goes, all right, dude, my bad, and he just walked away. <laughs> It was awesome. I remember seeing him go through a crowd. He was like, yeah, no, I asked him. I asked him. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> what happens to the gang? Do I take over? <laughs> I'll buy those bandanas if that's what this means. <laughs> I would love it if he heard about it. He goes, wait, that was Chris Tellez? Yeah, we could use a trickster like that in the gang. <laughs> I was like, no, this guy's going to beat my ass double hard when he finds out, right? But I didn't have to worry about that because I shit you guys not. Two periods later, Carlos got into a fight with another guy that went to our school named Chris Ramos, because he thought he was me. <laughs> and to make it even sweeter, he stabbed him in the hand with a sharp pencil, got suspended from school, and I never had to see him again. <laughs> it was a good lie, I'm glad I told it, thank you. <laughs> you heard what happened to Ramos, right? <laughs> That's great. You know, every time I tell that story, sometimes I get a standing ovation because people are glad I didn't get my ass kicked, but you guys are different, and that's cool. I like that. I get it. Some people feel bad about Chris Ramos. I get that. Well, let me give you an update on that piece of shit Chris Ramos real quick. Here we go. Two years after we graduated from high school, Chris Ramos got really drunk one day, went for a drive, ran over a kid, and fucking killed him. All right, you guys have a great night. My name is Chris Tellez. You guys have been great.